Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. It's that time, it's tarot time with Cindy. And we're gonna do a general collective message for y'all. It is general, so it may or may not resonate. If it does, I'm glad we're able to connect. If it does not, hopefully the next time. Um, I started pulling some cards already. I started out with the Shadows of the Middle Ages, so I have to have some cards on the table to get started. And we are gonna pull out more cards together. I'm gonna to start to kind of show you what I have here and explain what I'm looking at. Well, actually, I'm just gonna start telling you what I think I'm seeing here. I'm seeing something where uh, I would kind of describe there's an individual around you that somehow triggers like your magic. Whether this is, um, I want to say there could be like it could trigger your intuition your, it might like be that where your intuition is like telling you something and you don't necessarily have physical evidence to prove that to you but you feel very strong about what your intuition is telling you um others of you this might actually uh trigger some sort of events around you where you have actual um supernatural experiences or it seems like things around you have become kind of like supernatural now I also feel like that this person there this other person's energy that I'm picking up in the reading I'm feeling like um like you feel something negative about it so so I want to put that in here because as I'm explaining that, it could kind of go anyway. I do feel like that you feel uh, something kind of malevolent about this energy. So who this person is, who they, they really, really are, is like they're a bridge here. Now, this is interesting, though, because what do they hide behind? This is kind of like a card that represents manipulation. So this, car, this person is hiding behind some type of manipulation. I want to say, I, I, it's weird though, because I, I kind of wonder if this person is somehow trying to access some type of like magic or experience through you, like through you. And that's the bridge part that I'm getting. Now, when I first pulled out the bridge as well, I thought, okay, this person is not this side or the other. They are the, the, the vehicle of transport to get from one side to another. So like if we looked at it in really literal terms, that this person is a bridge. Now, why do they hide, you know, who they really are? Which is interesting because this is somebody who who somehow navigates with, with manipulation or perhaps uses manipulative tactics and hides them. So I don't know. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> I appreciate y'all trying to put it in the comments and how to say this but you know english is challenging enough <laughs> with all the different rules i don't know <laughs> this i'm just going to call it sam hain you all know what it means for yourselves but when you're talking about i don't know the last time y'all this card came out it was it sounded like it, the m should be like a w and the h should be like a t or something i was like you know what no <laughs> I'm not even going to do it. I'm not going to do it. So I appreciate you all that know it. So anyways, we want to talk about, though, that this is about also possibly protecting oneself. Protecting oneself. Um, it could also be about connecting with, with the dead, speaking to the dead. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you could describe that. I mean, it could be somebody who does it. It's interesting, though, because the manipulation is coming out. Because there's a lot of different things that people can do that are like technically talking to the dead. I think most things are dead, <laughs> to be honest. Like most things exist in the spirit realm and then we're having a 3D experience right now. And that's in, that is not infinite. Like that is a defined amount of time. So we're part of the spirit realm too. The minute you're born, you're approaching your death date. So it's kind of like that, right? Like, so it's not creepy. And I mean, in some cultures it's I don't know, particularly in North American culture, it's really like, oh, it's really scary, it's really bad, it's really dangerous. But there's tons and tons of cultures where it's quite an, an open practice to kind of connect with ancestors, right? So I don't want to say that that's a bad thing, but it's almost like, well, the fact that the manipulation is coming up and it's a bridge. I want to say that this person could even be attempting to manipulate some type of information or energy or be a bridge for something. But why the manipulation? You know, that's the part that doesn't feel right. Or this person, actually, well, that's also interesting. 
They could be pretending that they're being manipulated. This person could be pretending that they're being manipulated. Now, okay, so I'm going to go to this card. This is how you feel about this person. So, I don't know, like, I feel like this person gives you a bad vibe. Again, I'm kind of going off what it talks about in the, um, in the book for this, but also how it looks to me. It comes off like Darth Vader. <laughs> it looks like Darth Vader, or it looks like, um, uh, who was Darth Vader's lord, <laughs> whatever, the, um, the Sith Lord. I don't know. Like, there's something about it that I feel like makes you feel uncomfortable. You don't feel uh, comfortable about this person. You're not sure about them. Or you do see them as kind of dark. Now, it's interesting because how this all affects you is you have the scarab here. So it is kind of like reaching into your own magic here. And I do feel like it maybe even activates you in some way. Like, connecting with this person... Hmm. It possibly makes you believe in magic, like, and I mean, like, really believe in it, <laughs> you know, so kind of like, yeah, I believe in manifestation and this, and then I don't know, it's almost like some, some type of supernatural experience, possibly, that, you know, you can't look past and like, okay, that's just crazy, like, there's something else going on here, that's definitely like, it's, maybe even created an awakening experience in you uh, with this person but your your advice is pretty like you know what this is like put up a pretty powerful boundary <laughs> put put up a pretty powerful boundary here it could even be um some type of religious or spiritual practice to protect yourself and I mean, the outcome for you is really, really good, though, because it's the heart card. And this is such a beautiful energy. I want to say it's the purity of the heart. It's feeling love. It's moving through heart space. It's expanding your heart chakra. So, yeah, I mean, oh, it's legit to perhaps protect yourself from this person. So, okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the archetype deck. I am reading the reversals in this because the reversals will be the shadow side to look at this a little bit more. <clears throat> okay, who they really are. Gambler. In the light. So they got that. That's with the bridge. Willingness to follow intuition even when others doubt you. So that's interesting. I mean, this person will, it's kind of funny because I said, I feel like it activates. It could even just activate that in you, like a level of intuition, trusting it to some extent. Okay. So the spider is kind of like who they're pretending to be. could be manipulative i don't know you're not and it's funny because it is there's something here where you're like oh, i don't know about this person okay i can already see it's coming out in the reverse so the shadow embracing negative causes or committing to causes for personal gain that's the advocate in the reverse well this person's putting on quite a little mask here all right because they are pretending that maybe that there are some type of causes that they are committed to, but they're committed to them through some type of uh, manipulation. I don't. There's something that could be something about this person where they could be sort of like um, they could be displaying some type of victim mentality. They could be displaying some type of victim mentality here. And maybe that's kind of like producing a little bit of a red flag for you. Why they hide their cheek? Oh, no. Oh, no. That's crazy. The victim card. So that's why, what, why it's coming out. Why, why are they really hiding who they are? Sam Hain, victim. Prevent you from letting yourself be victimized or victimizing others. That's interesting, though, because that's in the light, though. 
I don't know, maybe this person has been victimized in the past and they don't want to be victimized in the future. Okay, you could be dealing with someone who, who's playing a little bit of cloak and dagger. It could even be, could even be your own energy. Um, but yeah, it's very curious. This person is pretending to be involved in some type of negative cause. Or that they're committing to this cause um, because it's giving them some type of personal gain. They're pretending that. They're literally like, this is the pretend area and the spider manipulation, right? So I don't know. It's almost like this person is pretending that they are being manipulated to commit to a cause. Why they're hiding this? Because they don't want to be a victim. It's giving me a little bit like, you know, that you sort of sit bear in the woods to lay down and play dead. <laughs> I don't know. What does that do with the bear in the woods? Try to climb a tree that they can't climb or knock down. I don't know. Um, right? Like, don't become a victim here, so lay down and play dead. Like, pretend something so that you're not a victim here. Maybe it's this person's intuition saying something about you. <laughs> so interesting. How does this affect you in this situation relationship? You got the scarab. Well, then you have the queen in the reverse, which is the shadow. Becomes arrogant when authority is challenged, controlling and demanding. Well, because something's going on here. I don't know. I think I feel like it could be affecting you in a negative way here. It's kind of funny. So it's... But the scarab, though, is believing in magic. I'm kind of seeing a mirror. I'm almost wondering if these could be two, two people that are somewhat similar that are reflecting energy back to one another. And with the energy that you're reflecting back to one another might be energy that you utilize to kind of protect yourself from... I don't know, like um, unhealthy personalities of other people coming towards you or personality traits that, you know, don't don't go well with you or. OK, so the cross is your advice. OK, that's in the upright child wounded. Oh, very interesting. Awakens compassion and desire to serve other wounded children, opens the learning path for forgiveness. This is, a, well, this is a commit, okay. Some of you could be dealing with someone, all right? Some of you could be, you could be, um, like, you could be a spiritual leader. You could be a life coach. You could be, um, I don't know, this could even be just someone in your work environment, right? And something's going off here. And it's almost, because it's kind of telling me that you might have a similar wound, to this person and you both may have a particular way of guarding that wound and it's feeling a little bit like it might be creating some sort of distrust because this is like being committed here what is the what find the problem <laughs> what it feels like like find the problem we look at the okay the cross the cross. The cross card represents challenges, burdens, and a sense of destiny. All right. This is the advice. It signifies the presence of difficult or significant life experiences that carry spiritual or emotional weight. This card often indicates the need for perseverance, faith, and acceptance of one's circumstances. It suggests that through facing the transcending challenges, personal growth and spiritual transformation can be achieved. I feel like there's something here in this situation or relationship that you are, you're really meant to learn. And when you learn it and when you transcend possibly the wound, like it's <clears throat> extremely beneficial for you. This sounds like uh, bad medicine. Yeah, bad medicine. Go through the life lesson no matter how difficult it may be. Do not despair and keep the faith. The cross is a very powerful card that casts its shadow over the entire spread. I do feel like there's something very kind of destined to in this energy. This person is willing to take a chance possibly as well. 
this person may have rubbed you the wrong way or I don't know. But I, there's a possibility that this, you might both have a certain defense mechanism up based on a wound. So it is advising you, right? Like, maybe see the wound in someone else. Can we see the wound in another person? That's so weird that I say that. That's reminding me. I don't know if it came out fully in the collective reading that I did with Mariana and San. But as a personal discussion, um, it was actually like seeing the wound in another person. This is a very different context, though, um, from what we were talking about, or at least what was being even discussed just with us. Um, because this is like, it's almost like you have the same wound as someone else. And you might both trigger each other in the same way. This person's not being truthful about, you know, the things that they're involved. This person may be trying to look negative for some reason. This person could be trying to blend in. If there's a negative situation around them, they could be trying to blend into that negativity to go unnoticed. Why? Because I don't want to be the victim here. But it's triggering you. I feel like it triggers you. How it affects you. Becoming arrogant when authority is challenged. I mean, it could even be like, it could have been your own kid or something like that, right? Controlling and demanding. Magic. You could be trying to force... You could be trying to force past something here as a possibility. And right, and the advice is to meet it head on. Meet it head on and see the wound. Because I do want to say there's like the the potential for enormous healing here. So the heart. Well, the advice. Wow. The thief. Look at who's got the heart card here. Oh, interesting. Outcome if you follow the advice is the heart. Thief in the upright. Shed lights on the potential wealth within you that can never be stolen. I want to say it is something about seeing another's wound. It is about seeing another person's wound. Somebody's trying not to be a victim here. But it's weird because it almost feels like they might be showing up like a victim. But maybe that's the camouflage. How do you feel about this person? Oh, we got child nature in the reverse. Tendency to abuse animals, people, and the environment. Oh my gosh. We really need tarot. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, here he comes. We could do a quick visit. I <laughs> thought you would love him. I gotta have another channel for Larry. Because when I'm in my rhythm, it's <laughs> kind of stay in my rhythm. Hi, honey. Oh, and you're wet. That's not good. Here, do a quick purr. All right. Okay, yeah, not all my cards all wet, though. Okay. Bye, Lily. Bye. He just winked. Did you wink at everyone? Did you? Okay, honey. Thank you. But no, look, you're all wet. <laughs> I'm going to get into the tarot on this one. Let's see. This is very curious. Who this person is. They are the gambler in the upright. Willingness to follow intuition even when others are doubting you. And the bridge. This person is trying to go from one spot to another. Possibly, or this person is access from one spot to another. Wow. The moon. They pretend to be you, the mask that they hide behind. Joy, the devil. This is weird. I'm going to tell you, this almost, okay, this energy, this totally 
makes me feel like this is somebody who would even say to you, I'm like trapped in or I'm being forced to, I don't know, do something like uh, really bad. I'm being manipulated and forced to do this. This is a weird energy, huh? Like, I'm being forced and manipulated to do this. Embracing negative causes, committing to causes for personal gain. They're pretending to be that. You know what? They're pretending that they're being forced to do so. This person is bad. <laughs> like that. Like, I feel like this is a bad energy. I'm going to tell you, it feels a little bit weird. Um, like, somebody who would be in, like... <laughs> I don't know, some type of satanic group or something like that. <laughs> Could be something like that. Like, it's someone who, it's not good. It doesn't feel like good energy. It's, they're pretending like they're being manipulated and forced to do this. But they're not. That's the thing. That's the pretend thing. So why, though? Now, I'm wondering, is this victim in the light? Why is the victim in the upright? That's the part that I find really intriguing. So here, I'm going to, I'm just going to call it Sam Hain, okay? That's how Cindy says it. <laughs> Cindy says it. Um, but, uh, yeah, the spirit realms, thinnest. This is a period of time, like around Halloween and all that stuff. Uh, liminal time between, when the veil between the physical and spiritual realms is thinnest, allowing for communication with ancestors and spirits. <sighs> oh, this person's trying to find out what your wound is. This person is trying to find out what your wound is. That's what that is. Right? And protection against malevolent, malevolent, malevolent. They haven't spelled that right, have they? Spirits, you know what I'm saying? Um, malevolent, no. This person has boundaries. It's almost like this person would want access to you, but you cannot have access to them. Let's get a card for that. The Six of Swords. That's a weird energy coming in with this. That's almost like, okay, how this is coming through right now, it's like she's holding out some type of sacrifice and being asked to give it, like to give it. This person, okay, this person wants you to sacrifice something here. This person wants you to sacrifice something here. I'm not going to lie. Like, I feel like they're interested in what your wound is. The hanged man. I feel like you're very protective. Like to right with the queen in the reverse and the scarab. You, there could even be where you might see when certain things happen here or because I, I want to say that I feel like this person is trying to get past one of your boundaries, right? They're trying to do it. And with the moon too, the bridge, right? Like they're trying to get from one spot to another. 
And even the symbol of water, like water under the bridge, water under the bridge. The way is it? It's water under the bridge. Like, just don't forget. Just don't worry about it. <laughs> so, so I don't know what this is around, but it does, like, even when I say that, it's kind of like somebody just doesn't respect boundaries. Like, yeah, don't, don't worry about it. Don't. It's just water under the bridge. <laughs> no. Because the hangman is observing, right? In kind of like a, a standstill and observing, just seeing what happens. Becoming arrogant when authority is challenged. If you don't let this person cross your boundaries, they probably get pretty aggressive and demanding. They want to control. Heck, advice for you. The cross and the child wounded. Damn, man, the seven of wands. Don't let somebody see a wound. <laughs> So this is interesting how this is um, transformed as we have pulled the layers of this off. Uh, protect yourself. Protect yourself. It is a very strong, like, protect yourself here. How come you follow the advice? is really knowing that, that what's within you can't be stolen. So, yeah, the value of you is kind of like sacred and untouchable as long as you you maintain that and don't allow others to, I don't know, bring down a bone. I don't know what this person's doing. The Seven of Cups. I think somebody's trying to create like some type of illusion. I'm not gonna lie. Like I, I feel like you, you're, you're dealing with someone here who's involved in some sort of a cult or something. And it's just the, <laughs> to get the raven and then this in the reverse. Like somebody who abuses animals people or the environment you see them as this and hold up a pretty strong boundary the king of wands could specifically be like a leo it is the king of wands specifically Somebody who has their own interests. I mean, it's coming out, it came out in the upright, but the cards associated with it are not particularly good. That have come out in the same placement. Somebody who will dismantle anything at any cost. What was the underlying... Oh, the fool in the reverse. Interesting. Using humor to wound rather than liberate. Denial of your emotional truth. Not yours. This is like, the spread is kind of like what's around you. So, so this is somebody who will use their words to hurt. <gasps> they want to wound you. This person wants you to be wounded. Why? Why are they hiding who they really are? It's weird. Every time I look at that little section, it's like I get the, an answer that is very clear. And then when I go to articulate it, it almost like disappears. It's odd. This person wants to hurt you, maybe verbally. They might make fun of you or they might crack jokes that are intended to hurt you, to bring you down. This is because there's a difference, right? Like you can be with a group of people and you can be joking about things and it's trying to make, trying to make heavy or difficult situations. Um, just kind of like elevate us out of that, right? Like that's honestly like the healthy purpose of humor. But are we all laughing? That's the question. Are we all laughing with that? Where this person is probably laughing and they think that that's okay. I'm laughing. You're not. 
Well, now you have a wound. Yeah, right? So this, okay, I feel like that this is someone who is possibly trying to maybe like make fun of you or belittle you. This could be very subtle or it could be um, maybe not so subtle. But this person is trying to figure out what your wound is. So they might be trying different tactics because this person is definitely... Uh, <laughs> why they they I want to say that this person can see that you don't want to be a victim this person trying to uncover something about you which is kind of like you know get in your own lane get in your own fucking why why I mean unless it's your psychiatrist or something I don't know but I'm a little suspicious of the techniques that are going on here um Temperance, King of Swords, Eight of Wands, waiting, it's almost like waiting for the truth, or, uh, it's weird, okay, just give me, uh, it's like the King of Swords it doesn't have time for alchemy, like I don't have time for this process. I want action now. I want results now. You could be dealing with someone who's about to become impatient. Impatient with whatever it is that they're doing or they want to find out about you or how they want to trigger you. You should have a pretty strong boundary with this person. This is, I because I feel like too, I don't know, like maybe some of you have even been doing a lot of your own internal work here and looking at your wounds and kind of figuring out maybe how those wounds were created, addressing them, healing them. Why does this person act like they're they're being manipulated? There's there's a, an energy here of like someone who I feel like would project gaslight <laughs> use um inappropriate humor, they might be laughing their head off. The moon, who they are, the moon. This person might be driven by their own fears, too. The moon, the gambler, and the bridge. Oh, the queen of wands. That came out, that one came out in the upright. You know, I'm going to say it again. Like I said, I think you might have a similar wound to this person because now I'm feeling like this person sees something in you that they see in themselves. And it's almost like instead of addressing it in themselves, they want to um, to bring the wound out in you. And, and I don't know, like laugh about it. It's really kind of weird, no? This person. Uh, the devil and the spider... The Two of Swords and the Wheel of Fortune. This is what they're pretending. They're, this this person is pretending like they don't have any choice. And so, I don't know. Like, it's weird, right? It's like this person is acting like they don't have any choice here. That this is all out of my control. I wouldn't be surprised if this person tries to spin it off that you're manipulating them or you're forcing them to, I don't know, even like converse with you in any way. I just, this is the kind of energy that feels like to me, this is somebody who never, this is, this is feeling like someone who never got past a certain level of emotional or intellectual, I don't want to say intellectual, but some type of psychological, some type of emotional or psychological development is stunted here. I mean, unless I'm dealing with a kid, like this is what this is, I don't know. 
Victim, Samhain, and the Six of Swords. Why they're hiding. The Emperor and the Four of Swords. Oh. Oh my gosh. The way this is playing out. Look at this. Look at how she's like sneaking behind, from behind. And the look on her face. I don't know if you can catch it on the camera, but the look on her face. Looking at the emperor from behind. So. This could be someone that you have some type of authority over. I mean, it could be. It really, honestly, it could be. It could be someone that you have some type of authority over. And this person doesn't like that, you know, like, so you could have a position at work, um, where you're this person's supervisor or something, and they might be trying to make it like that you're victimizing them, but they're probably joking and maybe even saying things that are inappropriate to try to get like a laugh going, but it's like laughing at you. They're trying to figure out what gets you right. Like if you make fun of someone or you target someone in a certain way or use a certain dialogue around them um to find out what their wound is like right well where where does this person you know you can see a change in someone's face or you can see something shift it's like what that's like what this person is looking for And it's coming off kind of weird here. So it's reminding me of something a long time ago. This is years ago. Why well, is it years ago? I make it sound like 20. I don't know. I think it's about four, four years ago or whatever. And when I was um, lunch monitoring, uh, helping out at my son's school, and there was one girl who was always getting kind of like bullied. She was the sweetest thing. I think I've talked about her once before in a reading, obviously not mentioning any names. But she was always getting bullied and she was so sweet and she had this kind of like really playful inner child. I don't know. I think she was like probably like in grade five or six at that point, but she still liked to dress up sometimes like a little unicorn. And, and I, I'm not saying like that she wasn't emotionally uh, mature. She actually was, but she had a really creative and funky little side to herself. But the other girls would get together and they would make fun of her. And then they were, I could kind of see like, I guess it was, it became obvious. You could tell how they were doing that and you would address it and say like, you know, this isn't right. You can't talk to her like that. Can you give her some space or whatever? But then they came up with this technique where if she was to go and tell someone what was happening, it'd be like, well, why would that be making you upset? You had to witness it <laughs> to get it. So they would ask her, they would say, oh, so-and-so, are you okay? Are you okay? And she'd be like, yeah, I'm fine are you sure? Are you okay? Are you sure you're okay? Are you like, they would persistently do that, like as a group to the point that, that she would not be okay <laughs> because like you're making her cry. And it was kind of like they were, or they were probably even maybe trying to make a wound. Oh, it was just really fucked up. Fucked up. I wanted to kill them. I was just like, oh, these bitches, <laughs> but I couldn't. Anyways, it's like, oh my God, just leave her alone. And I just thought, you're cruel. <laughs> what are you doing? She's not even bothering you. But there's, I don't know, like, right? Because it's like, look at how it's just like sneaking up from behind here. I'm going to get you. <laughs> get you good. I'm going to get you good. What is this energy? But now this, though, feels like you might be in some type of authority with this person. I don't know. Could even be like an older sibling, and it could be like a younger sibling or someone that you're dealing with. Yeah. Everything <laughs> is really what's going on. For a bit here because this has been uh something else so why do we have the queen in the reverse for how this affects you in this relationship this is very interesting you have the nine of wands the page of wands and the queen of cups you know i kind of want to say i feel like it makes you want to be happy <laughs> it's like i want to be happy <laughs> this person and maybe even wanting to, like, there could be something, I don't know, about, 
this person or family, like if this person is in your family too, there might be something here that you just want everyone to know. <laughs> want everyone to know. But it really, there's like a desire here to communicate and just wanting to be happy. Fascinating. Okay. <laughs> Advice for you. The cross, the seven of wands. I don't know, like protect, protect. And it could even be like, it's giving me that energy, like a, like wounded children, right? Well, it's giving me that energy. The card is here. The nine of cups, the 10 of wands and the two of wands. Wow, it's to take on, it is like to take on some type of responsibility here. I can't, is this, I don't even know. Like you could even be a social worker or something, right? Like you had, would have like maybe some type of authority over somebody that you're dealing with. Advice for you, protect the wounded children, protect the wounded child within yourself. And it might be postponing. I want to say Ten of Wands to Two of Wands. This could be postponing a dream or wish with the Nine of Cups to satisfy an obligation. <laughs> but then, well, you have the Heart and the Thief. But the Seven of Cups comes with that. Maybe you're not understood, but that's probably okay. The Four of Cups. This is... Oh, there's a bit of a sacrifice of opportunity. It might also be recognizing, it could be like somebody who always tries to put you into negativity. Somebody always tries to put you into negativity. And recognizing that and recognizing that you're the person who's most responsible for what you feel. <laughs> Do you ever feel like, like the conversations that we had like growing up with adults, we still have those conversations. Just at a different extreme. So this child, this per abusive raven, king of wands. This person is abusive. I don't know. The six of swords and the six of pentacles. You see this. You see that this person. Right? Well, they have the Six of Swords is why they're hiding their true selves. That's there. And this is the little section about how you feel about this person, how you feel or think about this person. And you see the Six of Swords. This person is trying to manipulate you or is breadcrumbing you. It's curious. I'm going to ask specifically Raven. It's like a, the tower. Oh, my gosh. The Tower, the King of Wands. The Eight of Swords and the Ace of Cups. Man, I don't, it could be someone you, like you think that this person I don't know. I mean, for some of you, this could even be some type of a kind of like a romantic connection. I don't know. Who they are is the Queen of Wands. That's interesting. That's interesting. Who they really are is the Queen of Wands. Who you think they are is the King of Wands. This could be somebody like, I don't know what level you know this person on, but this could be someone that is actually, could be an actual feminine but you think they're a masculine. Yes. The Seven of Cups at the bottom. The Lovers, the Knight of Cups, the Empress, and the Seven of Cups. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> it's like, there's that Seven of Cups. I don't know. This could be someone too. Like, I think... I don't know. We always lean into narcissists. It seems like there's a lot. <laughs> there seems like, I don't know, like a pandemic of them, or we're just becoming more aware of them, and so there's a lot more nuances to them that we can identify it with, but I don't know. This almost feels like somebody who, like, there's an energy here that is too good to be true. I mean, the Seven of Cups is that. This is like castles in the sky. Could be somebody who talks a big talk, but never produces a big walk. <laughs> Go. Well, I'm going to go do the extended. the hell? What <laughs> do with that? I don't know. You know, I'm going to just keep it open. 
I'm just gonna keep it open. I'm gonna try to direct it a little more towards your energy, but it's always up to spirit in that case. So we'll see what happens. Thank you very much, everyone. Until next time, do be gentle with yourselves. Bye.